today a couple friends of mine, Liz and Ryan, are going to be showing us their low tunnel. And they're going to show us how to bend, to get a bender and actually use it to bend a low tunnel. Same concept for bending a high tunnel. So you can either spend a decent bit of money and go buying a pre-made kit, or you can actually make one yourself and save a significant amount of money. And so they're going to show us how. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead, but here's my friends Liz and Ryan. Um, we're here in front of our um, hoops and we've got some of the crops from last fall that are starting to fade out before we do summer planting. Um, this is electrical conduit hoops um, that we've built. We bought a hoop bender, four foot wide hoop bender. Three quarter inch conduit um, and it, it just slides over top of some, some rebar stakes basically and it's, it's been something that, that really holds up rather strongly. And then we um, take it into the ground for about, about a foot. Um, on both sides and then you're able to take so if you get three quarter electrical conduit this fits perfectly over the top you can take it all the way down to the ground so if you've dug it all the way in it hits ground level there and then you do the same thing on the other side um, and then you've got a hoop that's not going to go anywhere we get severe weather here and these have not gone anywhere yeah. we get a lot of wind through this valley again and and we needed something that was going to be able to, to support we we needed it to right now we have the the poultry netting on it to keep the the chickens out um, keep them from eating our lunch basically. Mm -hmm. um, but really when it's colder, we can just put plastic over it and then we have ourselves a, a pretty cheap, quick, easy hoop house, greenhouse to, to keep things warm. Um, there is irrigation uh, underneath of it, underneath the, the weed fabric that we have. Um, but it, uh, like the blueberries and apples, same weed fabric that allows the, the rain to come through. So we only irrigate when we have to, which fortunately we get a, a good bit of rain here so we don't have to do too much. Mm -hmm. but. Um, these hoops are strong enough that my kids come and hang on them and swing on them. So they're just, they're not going anywhere. They're mm -hmm. well in the ground, um, but they're easy to take up and put out. Put We're in. still kind of working out the kinks as far as how best to attach things to it. Right now we just have some cheap clamps to, to hold it in place and they do okay. They do great with this, but not with the plastic. Yep. So we're looking at cutting hoses in half, uh, not in half, but just putting a slit in a hose, putting the plastic on. Um, and then running the hose over the top of it all the way around to clamp it on to each one. Um, and then one thing that we've read as well that we'll be trying um, here in the next couple days is if you take the plastic out and make it out here instead of a wall, um, it gives the wind something to go up over instead of just hit and rip it off. We're in the barn now, and this is the, the hoop bender. Uh, this is what we made the hoops that help protect the, the garden from the chickens, and uh, also during the colder weather where we can we keep things warm. This. Yep, do a little hoop uh, houses. We got this from, from Hoop Bender online, but you can also get them at Johnny's Select Seeds. Um, and this one I think was about 45 bucks. Um, or if, yeah, if you want to save the $45 and know how to weld. Well. It's just getting the right diameter down to figure out how to, how to bend it. It's not, uh, not anything too terribly difficult. But. So this hoop bender is specifically for making four foot wide hoops. Mm -hmm. So for four foot wide rows. And so we have the three quarter inch conduit, um, 10 foot lengths uh, is what worked well for us. Um, you start by marking 16 inches from the end and you mark the middle. 16 inches from both ends. It's usually helpful to have two people, but you can do it by yourself. Sometimes it slips a little bit though. So it mean almost flying once, but it's not hard to do. You don't have to have a lot of muscle to do it. So you're gonna bend it just a little bit till about this halfway point here. You didn't say you didn't have to have muscle for it. It kind of would have been nice to look like I was strong here. <laughs> you look very strong. Thank you, dear. Uh -huh. So you stop about there and then we're gonna move it through. And then bend it. This is where it's nice to have a second person to hold this end or else it starts slipping on you a little bit. And so we're getting, we're approaching that halfway mark and uh, that halfway mark needs to be in the middle there. There you go. That halfway mark is halfway through the bender and he's going to pull it as far as he can. And then we slide it out. And stick the other, the opposite end in, which is already slightly bent because we did 
we were learning on this one. But we're going to slide this one back into that 16 inch mark. There you go. That's good. And then hold on this side and he's going to pull this one all the way in. And pull it out. And there's your hoop. So when you put the stake in the ground, you can just pull that side out a little bit. Bounce. They still move. They're pretty flexible. So we use the rebar stake. So this side's a little bit, um, it needs to be straighter. Um, we have messed up that side yeah, beforehand. That side messed so. up from beforehand. But you can see this side is nice and straight. So it will um, slide on perfectly up to this point uh, with your rebar stake. Um, so That's why having that 16 inch mark on each side was important to have your straight end. Because you don't want to bend both sides. Like we did. There you go. That Example one. of what not to do. Example of what to do. These are the stakes that we put in the ground to help hold the hoops up. This one is actually one that we got for another project. This is a 24 inch. We use a 36 inch there. Um, but they just you get them at the hardware store. They're next to all the rebar. Uh, they can use you use them for forming. They've got holes where you can drive screws and such through. But essentially, we just hammered into the ground and then. If you get the three quarter inch electrical conduit, then it slides perfectly over the top of these. If you Correct. get something smaller, then it's not going to work. And with a three foot one, it goes up far enough that it's going to give it a nice solid support. It shouldn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can use it for the netting, basically in poultry netting or that kind of thing. That's what we use to keep the chickens out. Uh, but at the same time, during colder weather, you can just put some plastic over top and basically have yourself a, a pretty little cheap, house. small hoop house, a little greenhouse to at least get seeds started um, or to keep things warm for a while. You can get um, a lot of different hoop benders. Um, the one that we got was a four foot wide one for our four, four foot wide beds. Um, but you can get them six, 12 foot wide. Um, we'll probably get some six footers and do a little bigger for protecting our blueberries from the birds um, when they start putting off. Mm -hmm. So um, Same idea though. It's a great tool. You can get the electrical conduit for pretty cheap. Pretty cheap at Lowe's. Um, and it, it's, it's something you can reuse year after year. It's, it's not going to go bad. It's not hard to take off because they just slide off those stakes to where we can I take them off fertilize and, them and do everything that we need to do. Yeah. It's not hard. My uh, seven-year-old helps me do it <laughs> and we have a great time doing it. Most of the wind is coming from that direction this way. And so you'll see the pavers that are holding the weed fabric in. That's all because of how strong the wind comes. It would just tear the fabric. I mean, it was only a couple times I started realizing that I was not having fun chasing our fabric all the way over by the pond and having to bring it back and re-put it down. So we had to come up with some way to, to keep it down. Uh, and so that's what we ended up doing with the pavers. I guess you, you could wonder why doing a weed fabric. It was actually something my parents started doing because they were doing a massive garden um, and my mom couldn't keep up with all the weeding. I was like, well, I can't keep up with all the weeding with the kids and homeschooling. Um, and so we decided to try it. My only concern was crop rotation, um, putting down weed fabric because I want to change things up where I plant it every year. Um, so we did four foot wide um, weed fabric and then I wrote on each one after I cut holes for the specific um, distances between plants. So I've got my green bean one and the plants are a lot closer going down in rows um, with the holes all cut and it's labeled. And so every year I just put that down on the row that I'm gonna do green beans on and can rotate that. Um, and when the holes cut for green beans, I just go along and take my fingers and just plug in the green beans and down all the holes. I already have the distance measured. They come up beautifully. They just push up right through it. And I don't have a ton of weeding. I can spend more time um, out here picking and harvesting um, and canning and putting it up, um, which when it's in full swing, you know what happens with your garden. You have to let the weeds go and pick the stuff so you can get it put up. But this allows for it actually to stay looking pretty nice. The only problem is the pathways. Um, so you have to keep something on that. And the thing we found best, right now we've got straw on it because over the winter I didn't have grass clippings, but grass clippings work really well. They create a really, um, great mat um, so I try to bag every couple weeks or so when I'm mowing it takes longer with these big fields but it's worth it and after I get a good mat down that's probably four to six inches then I'm good for the rest of the summer and the weeds they don't come up through it yeah. um, they stay out and it's a nice path for the kids to walk on so it works really well mm -hmm. and it creates great soil there the worms love it oh yeah no shortage of worms there 
Now, certainly with the weed fabric and, and having to move things from one spot to a, another each year, um, it's, it is going to be a bit of a pain to have to move these pavers around. Now, fortunately, we don't have to move them, but a few inches off of it. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we had long pieces of wood, but those started to warp, and then you start worrying about kids with splinters, and it was just rotting and becoming a bit of a mess. So um, because of the spacing of it, it worked out really well with the tractor that we laid down the fabric uh, over top of the, the irrigation system, lined out the pavers, and that was the right space for the wheels of the tractor. To so, drive on the pavers. Yeah, so we'd, we'd had the fabric being held down by the pavers, drive over top of it, that kind of pushes the pavers down in the ground some to hold it still so that it, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so it made it pretty easy just to lay them down in a row and drive over top and it tightened everything down. And, and it made a nice mound. Mm -hmm. yep. um, we did that after every spring we try to put on um, two inches of compost because um, we're doing no till so it's not getting tilled but we want to add um, nutrients to it every spring and you could do it in the fall as well um, but we take these up and um, you could do the cover crops um, which we'd like to try to do this fall after we um, pull it up is put some cover crops in then cut those down add compost and then you can put your um, weed barrier fabric back on mm -hmm. So, so far it's been working really well. I was super happy with how it went last year. The garden looked nice the most of the summer um, and I did minimal weeding, which was great. Yeah. It's the second year with this fabric. It's held up well so far. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine that we'll be able to get a, a few years out of it.